Where you scream, don't watch that, watch this And I'll dive down through this hair reflection Hi and welcome to Watch This, I'm CJ Johnson. October really seems to be Netflix's month. There's so much new stuff on Netflix. There are old shows returning, brand new shows, a whole bunch of new original films, all sorts of great content. One of the ones that has piqued our interest here at Watch This, myself, Adam Boys, and Christy Ocamp Shuta is Maniac. It's actually a remake of a Norwegian show. It's directed by Kerry Fukunaga, who's about to take over the James Bond franchise and who is probably most famous for directing the entire season one of True Detective. It stars Emma Stone and Jonah Hill, and we're going to dissect it in great deal. Okay, people, let's begin. In five, four, three, two, one. My mind is playing tricks. Hi, Christy. Hi, Adam. Hi, G'day, CJ. CJ. So, Maniac, this one sort of, I guess, had a bit of hype, and that was basically based around the director and these two actors. Mm -hmm. How did you guys go in? Did you sort of go in cold? I went in pretty cold. Mm. Mm. Same. Same. I didn't look at, I didn't see any trailers, so I tend not to, and it was a wonderful surprise. Yeah, well, you found it a wonderful surprise? Yeah, and I love the return. These two actors coming back together, both kind of starting their careers together on Superbad and then being able to mature together is just wonderful and seeing them play kind of a myriad of different in interactions is really great as well. Yeah, okay, so yeah. It's, it's, it's set in, well, this is what's interesting about it. Where would you say it's set? I think, I, I would definitely say this is a sci-fi show, oh, yeah. but it is not necessarily set either in the future or in something that's steampunky, it just seems to be set in an alternative reality. Mm. Oh. And it feels like part of that reality that they've constructed is slightly in the past. Like there's not a lot of mobile phones. It feels like certain elements of technology are slightly mm. behind our own, and then other elements of technology, such as the trial that these guys are undergoing, they're mm. undergoing a, a medical pill trial, mm. is slightly in the future. Would, what do you think about that idea? Oh yeah, I think they're deliberately doing that just to make people know that it's somewhere in the early 2000s, I think. You think it's around somewhere um, in the early well, 2000s? Well, like sort of in between, I would say, uh, 2000 to 2020, maybe it's not that early, but mm -hmm. um, somewhere mm -hmm. in between there, um, it's, I found that very confusing, but I liked it, you know, it was like everything um, was sort of at its base level, I guess, with the ad buddy thing. Instead of sort of seeing it, you've just got someone yelling ads at you, um, which is sort of, if you sort of grind it down to what ads are, I guess that is it. So it, it has this sort of timeless quality to it, I think. What do you think? Yeah. Do you think it's and the technology they use in the trial has got that um, 80s version of the future yeah. style to its construction. So I think, yeah, you're right. Alternative reality fits. Mobile technology isn't the key, and I, I love the ad buddies as well, that <laughs> creation of a job for people. <laughs> they just uh, seem to appear, they find you, and then they... Yeah, so the ad buddies is sort of like, takes the place of instant credit, I suppose. If you want to buy a pack of cigarettes, for mm. example, as Emma Stone's character wants to buy in the first episode, instead of paying for it, you can pay for it by ad buddy, and then I guess for about the next 10 minutes or so, a human being... You, you, you basically have allowed this human being to follow you around and show you a lot of ads. Yeah. But and old school, not even on a screen, but just it's like pieces brochures of cardboard, almost. Brochures, yeah. 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 But it was quite cute because they had, you know, then there's a conversation between Emma mm. Stone and one of the ad buddies and they're talking about, we could go to Salt Lake City together, you know, you'd pay for my ticket, you know. Um, and she's like, that would be really fun, you know, the ad buddy says. Um, so it was quite sweet in a way. It wasn't too dystopic, I thought, dystopic. Um, it was like, I wouldn't mind, I'd do that. That job? <laughs> I mean, no, I'd, I'd have someone do that uh, to me. Yeah, gotcha. Yes. Yeah, well, do, yeah the way you, you can't start poking too many holes in, logical holes in things like this, because you would think that like everyone would sort of have ad buddies all the time. This is some multi-reality brain magic shit. Know what's real and what's not. It's very highly structured. Like the first two episodes introduce us to the world, and also they introduce us to these two characters 
very, very uniquely. You get episode one introduces you to Jonah Hill's character and he is schizophrenic. I think that's very, very clear. Mm. He is schizophrenic in the way that we in this reality know it. Right. And then we're introduced to Emma Stone's character whose issues are slightly more amorphous, but they seem to be to do around money or lack of and trauma. Trauma and grief, mm. yeah. Trauma and grief. Mm. And so by the end of episode two, you've seen these two meet at this drug trial twice. Because episode one charts Jonah Hill's character going there and episode two charts Emma Stone's character going there. And the trial is ostensibly, they're both doing it ostensibly for the money, although also perhaps because of their underlying problems. Mm. Would you think that that's sort of an adequate summation of oh, totally. episodes one and two? Absolutely. And then it continues to set up this amazing world and takes you on these journeys and I'm I haven't seen it all yet and so I've just I'm peaked. I want I want to find out where these lead and how it ties back. A lot of questions are raised in those first two episodes as well, which is yeah. perfect writing, you know, you're just hinting at a lot of things with these characters that what's real, what isn't, and then we want to discover that. So where are you at? Um I think it's episode, I want to say five, actually. I thought I'd only seen a three, but I think I've seen up to okay. episode five. So yeah. there's eight in total? Yes. So, so I've, I've kind of climbed that, that little mountain and now I'm ready to... And what about you, Christy? Oh, I'm around episode three. Uh, around three? Yeah. I am, um, okay, here's my big drop. I'm at six and a half and I've left. Ah, uh, why? Because... I loved episodes one and two. Right. I thought episodes one and two were brilliant and I was so excited because I thought this is it. This is my next six hours now and mm. I'm just going to love this because I love the design and mm. I love the direction. And I think they're both very good. I think she especially is very, very good. Oh, yeah. And those first two episodes were everything I love about sci-fi. I love sort of alternate realities. I mm. love, you know... You know, just clever thinking, like what are the ad buddies or the, the weird dog poo machines, you yeah. know. I love that sort of stuff. But then the series really got into their heads and I realised that that is a trope I hate. When shows take place inside people's heads and there are entire episodes of this season that take place inside their heads, I completely check out. Because although it means the director and the production designer and the actors can do fabulous things, so all of a sudden they can be in the 1920s or all of a sudden they can be in the 1980s or the 1970s, for me it means there are no stakes. And so I completely check out. And um, unfortunately, I don't feel that the show's coming back to where I needed to come back to. I feel like I wanted it to be the first two episodes and I realised that it's actually more like episodes five and six are really what the show is. Once you begin to appreciate the structure of the mind, there's no reason to believe that anything about us can't be changed. Pain can be destroyed. The mind can be solved. I have put it on hold, it hasn't, but I, but I want to think that that's because of life circumstances and <laughs> yeah. things that have gone on yeah. than uh, the show. I, I do still want to know where, how it pans out. I guess maybe I'm not burning to see the next episode, but I've really loved all those divergences. Did like, you? Yeah, I, I loved that. I thought that was... Uh, they were little adventures. It was a way of doing a sort of um, episodic kind of status quo kind of show, but then there was, they still, I think they gave us enough of the present day story arc and their story arc with the scientists and they were introducing some quirky things there. Yeah. That was enough for me to want to go into the worlds and then also care about how it was affecting the outside. Yeah. I, I'm willing to see it through. That's good. Please yeah. report back. Tell me I'm wrong. You know, and I'm always happy if someone comes along and says, actually, you know what, just do the last two hours because yeah. it's worth it. You yeah, know, that's sure. always good. Thing is, I don't like those two scientists. I am uh, not interested in them at all. Justin right. Thoreau and that uh, woman, and that woman, I don't know her name, the actress escapes me. She's fabulous. Yeah. She is and wonderful. Justin Thoreau is fabulous in other things. But those two in those characters, I couldn't give a rat's ass about those two at all. And every time they're talking about the project, I'm like getting a bagel in my head. Oh. I, yeah. I feel like it's lost, the, the science program of lost. <laughs> without uh, taking itself super seriously. I feel like it's making fun of 
lost. <laughs> is it a comedy? <laughs> Well, that's the yeah. thing. There's some very funny moments. The one I loved in particular, just this old lady reading Black Beauty. When the fuck is this horse going to die? <laughs> I, I loved it. That's good. Just like these little characters that are so quirky. Another dirty old guy, bring, well, not even old, 40s, bringing like a pack of condoms into the study. Oh, that's hilarious. Right. But um, it's, it's weird. It made me definitely feel more sad than ha happy I watching. Think it's Swedish, right, you say? It's, yeah, the original is either Norwegian or, or Norwegian, Swedish, sorry. but I, I, I gather that they've really rebooted it. But see, it feels very Scan Scandinavian. It's got the, the adequate sort of inner darkness things to examine and psychological stuff to examine, but all through that lens of quirk. Uh, it's still got to be life is a, a joke in a way. It's all a bit of a joke. But while we do examine real things with both those people. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean about the sadness. Jonah Hill's character in particular is oh. really... <laughs> it's, it's a really sad character. He's a great oh actor. God. Look, he's oh, a he wonderful yeah. actor, yeah. He is. You know who's also good? Not not particularly range, but he's very good at being the douchebag, is Billy Magnuson, who plays his brother. Yeah, oh yeah. Or his time. brother and the, yeah, yeah. the fake boot. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, that guy is really good. Totally. Absolutely. Something's wrong. What did you do? Come on, wake up! Every time I separate them, they just find their way back together. You're not protecting those people in there. I found Emma Stone extremely abrasive here, almost that I, I, could, I could barely empathise with her at all. She was so abrasive. Uh, probably because she's not very nice to her sister, and I have a little sister, so oh. I felt a bit like, ah, you know, at her. Um, I, I, I found it quite hard to empathise with her because she's just so abrasive. She's Definitely had a lot of empathy for him, though. Oh, she's a brave actress. She's yeah. she mm. doesn't she doesn't bend over backwards to make you like her characters in the slightest. No. no. Yeah. So that's Maniac. It's on Netflix. I don't really know how it's going. Do you know? We we don't really know. But how do you feel in the buzzer fear? Do you feel like people are? No, just my friends who love. Uh, Gus Van Sant and Paul Thomas Anderson, they're the ones who are talking about it. So yeah, it's, people... it's not mainstream, is it? No. But I wish it was. Yeah. I, I think, I think, love it, I want to see more things like this. Yeah. yeah. Adam Boys is a definite watch this. I have pulled the plug at episode six and Christy's obviously still excited to continue her journey. Pro, oh, I've got a lot of stuff to watch. <laughs> Pro, sort of, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's Maniac on Watch This. You've been listening to Adam, Christy and myself, CJ. Do you know where you are? Right now. I'm in a drug trial. What do you think is wrong with you? I'm sick. And I don't matter. What would you say this trial is showing you about yourself? Is this therapy now? It's not therapy. It's science. <laughs>